Hey guys, welcome back to me being cheap. I took the day off from work today because I've got a lot of stuff I need to get done. I am a list maker and I have my list here. I have my cup of coffee. So let's, uh, let's go over this list and see how much we can get done today. So I'm struggling a little bit with the camera setup, uh, but I am trying to show you what is on this table. And first of all, I have a couple baskets of tomatoes that I need to can. These are ripe. I have already done barbecue sauce, enchilada sauce, ketchup, uh, sauce with basil, and I've done uh, tomato sauce, just plain. And then over here, I've got some tomato juice. So this time I'm going to try and can whole tomatoes if they're small, if they're relatively large, I'll go ahead and either have them or quarter them depending on how big they are. So um, one of the first things I need to do is these jars right here were canned yesterday. You're supposed to wait uh, 24 hours before you, um, before you move them. So it's, it's been enough time. I need to wash these jars. I need to remove the bands and I need to check the seals. Um, you may notice that uh, the majority of these have been canned with the, the tattlers, which is somewhat new for me, uh, but definitely want to check and make sure I got a good seal before I put these up. I also need to wash and label the jars as well. So because it's tattlers, I can't write on the uh, lid with a Sharpie, so I'll just have to get like some masking tape and just label the jar. So I need to do that. Um, I've got two jars right here. Um, these were actually put up in the fridge. This is what was left over from my first canning batch that did not fit in the canner. And this one is one where the, the seal didn't take. So I need to reprocess these. Okay, so in addition to washing jars, labeling them and put them away, I need to can tomatoes. So I'm going to get started with that task because that one takes the longest. While the canners are in, or while the canners, <laughs> while the tomatoes are in the canner, I've got some other things I'm going to do. I'm going to start a lot, a load of towels in the washing machine. And I have been line drying clothes for years. Towels always get kind of scratchy. I mean, they're stiff as a board. You can sometimes hold them out and they'll, you know, stand up. I was watching a video. I'm actually going to have to go back and find the video and um, I will link it down below in the comments to give her credit. But she was talking about what you can do um, differently uh, so that your towels are not as stiff. So um, it involved um, putting some baking soda in the wash vinegar in the rinse, and then of course giving, giving the towels an extra shake to flush up, uh, fluff up the fibers. Um, but I don't remember the amount, so I'm going to have to go back and find that video. Um, I do have peppers in this bowl, and then there's a pile of peppers here on the table that you probably can't see. I need to wash these and prep these and get them in the freeze dryer. And I need to go get a um, rabbit that we had uh, already butchered that's in the freezer. I need to get that out, thaw it, and find a recipe. Um, we need to make room in the freezer for, uh, we've got some other uh, rabbits that we need to send to freezer camp, but we need to uh, clear out some room first. So I thought what I would do is start making um, some rabbit dishes and uh, Nobody likes to eat the same thing over and over again, and a rabbit has got a good amount of meat on it, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a large dish. So I thought what I would do is make things that could also freeze dry well, so make the meal, eat what we want off of it, and then put the rest in the freeze dryer, and then seal those up for future use or camping or backpacking or what have you. Um, so I do need to find a recipe and see what we're gonna do with that. Out in the garden, I need to pull the dead uh, bean plants. And this year has been a terrible year for beans. The garden actually did really well with cucumbers and eggplants and peppers and tomatoes and 
but the beans they they didn't hardly do anything so I've got a bunch of dead bean plants out there I need to pull them up and then I need to find my pack of purple hole peas and get those soaking you have to soak those for 24 hours but I want to plant a fall crop of purple hole peas so I need to find those get those soaking I won't plant those today because the seeds have to soak overnight so that'll be tomorrow after work I'll go out and, and plant those um, and then today is September 1st and so last month was that um, every bit counts challenge and I was participating in that every day I posted something on Instagram and I also posted on Facebook too um, but I do need to put away all that freeze-dried food because I did <clears throat> excuse me I did a lot of the vegetables in the freeze dryer this year and so the mylar bags that you store those in those are not mouse proof and in fact at one point I had some mylar last year that I did not put up and I had a mouse get in there and, and chew so that that's not good so um, I do have some black storage bins that I stack the bags of the freeze-dried food in um, but I need to do some organizing on those because I've just been tossing those in as I go so I need to see if I need to actually get a new bin in order to, to fit the rest of the vegetables or if I can still uh, kind of consolidate and stack neatly and fit more in the bin so I've got a little bit of organization of the freeze-dried food that I need to do along with that I, I do need to do some cleaning um, just general cleaning around the house and then um, for my pantry I was looking um, I had bought from Dollar General this five gallon gray tote it, it was a plastic storage bin and I thought that would be really nice if I could get some more of those they could go on the shelf and I can organize some stuff in the pantry and um, I need to see if I can find those um, and order them without having to go uh, to out, out to the dollar store because we don't have one in town. I'd actually have to travel for that. But I want to see if I can order those online. I looked briefly last night and didn't see them. Um, I was looking on the Dollar Dollar General app and, and also online. So I don't know if everybody else is trying to get organized and clean. But um, I do need to find some bins and either go pick those up or just order them and, and bring them in. So that is on my to-do list for today. And I will check back in with you um, every little bit and we'll, we'll talk about the progress we're making. This is not a how-to video. If you want to know how to can uh, tomatoes, there's plenty of, there's plenty of videos out there. Um, but basically for the, the way I do it for the purpose of doing whole tomatoes, um, what I will do, first I need to wash these. Uh, but I will wash them and then I will have a pot of boiling water um, and then I will take out the core with a knife and then I'll plop these over into the boiling water and then I will take them out of the boiling water and then put them in some cold water and that will cause the skins to slide off um, just pull the skins off drop the tomato into the jar when your jar is full of tomatoes then you'll need to um, add some water uh, to bring it up to the bring it up to the top and I'm going to pressure can um, so I won't have to add like the vinegar and that sort of thing I'll probably add a little bit of salt for flavor um, but if you if you water bath can you're gonna have to add um, either the vinegar the citric acid or the, the lemon juice so I'm not doing that because I'm gonna pressure can but anyhow that's how I do mine and uh, yeah so I, I do have a couple baskets that I need to can up Alright, thanks for watching. I will check back in with you guys throughout the day and we'll see the process that I am making on the to-do list. Alright, thanks for watching. Alright, I've got the jars washed and put together with the jars from the previous load. And we had this time 100% lid success. So, yay! Glad we don't have to redo any of those. Okay, so I did mention that I was using Tattler lids. This box right here is the wide mouth and I used one of those, actually two of those. I was just grabbing whatever empty quart jars I had. Um, I did buy a supply of the wide mouth Tattlers and the regular mouth Tattlers. Um, so 
I am not too too experienced with these. I, I used some last year and obviously this year with the uh, canning lid shortage. These are nice because they're reusable. However, um, this this is one that I got second hand. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that I got a canning jar haul that also included a whole bunch of these used tattlers. And I don't know if the camera is picking this up or not, but this is the same size all the way around. Okay, these new ones, again, I don't know if this is picking it up, but it's got a depression here and you can see this depression has taken on the stain of the tomato sauce. The same here and here. So over here some of these aren't really stained but like we come over here and, and this one's got a stain. I don't know First of all, I don't know the purpose of this depression. I don't know if that has something to do with having it seal better or maybe it's to make taking the lid off a little easier. But I am hoping that the stain does not indicate that there is food between the lid and the rubber seal. The way you test these is you pick it up by the lid and if you could do that, you've got a good seal. So I'm hoping that these maintain their integrity. Uh, those of you that may be more familiar with these, shoot me a comment and let me know what this little de depression is. And then also, those of you ha who have used these, let me know if the staining is uh, indicative of a possible future lid failure. Um, because when you put these in the canner, you don't tighten them down. You, you leave them fairly loose and then once you take them out of the canner then you give them a twist and tighten the, tighten the metal band down. So anyhow, also wanted to point out those of you who get uh, lots of canning jars uh, probably used and without the box, these berry flats, these uh, strawberry flats work very nicely to hold precisely 20 jars. A nice snug fit. Um, I'm not going to carry 20, 20 jars down to the basement in one setting um, because I don't really trust the box is going to hold that. Um, that would be kind of risky going downstairs with a box that becomes flimsy. So I will be taking these down a few at a time but just thought I'd point out if you're looking for a convenient way to contain your um, contain your jars. If you don't have the boxes they came in, this is a nice way to do it. So I, I try to be efficient so when I take things down to the basement I bring things up. And in this case I know that I've got 12, uh, excuse me, two jars that I need to reprocess because they did not, well actually one did not seal, the other one didn't fit in the canner. My canner holds 14 jars, so I need to bring up 12 empty jars so that I can can the tomatoes. If I have not enough tomatoes to fill up those 12 jars, you still need to take the space up in your canner and I will just can some water in some empty quart jars to take up that space and I'll just use a used canning lid on that um, so that I don't use up any canning lids, those valuable canning lids. Um, I, I think it's okay to do that. I mean, I do that. It's just water um, and it's just taking up space and you know, you could keep that on hand for emergency purposes. So anyhow, I'm going to get to work. Um, I need to get these tomatoes in the sink so that I can wash them and then I'm going to sit down and just core all these. Uh, take the core end out and then I will get ready to uh, put them in the hot water and then put them in the cold water and slide the skins off. Alright, thanks for watching. Alright, I've got the tomatoes washed. 
and I'm getting ready to core them. I have my bowl for the tomatoes and a bowl for the scraps which will then be fed to the chickens. Um, some of these may not be ripe enough so I will set these to the side and use them on another day when they get ripe. Alright, I'll check back in with you in a few. Alright, just to catch you up, these are the tomatoes I'm going to save for another day. These are the ones that I'm going to can. They've been cored. All I need to do now is to put them in the boiling water, which I have going on the stove to get their skins off. And this will be fed to the chickens. And I do have all of the jars washed and labeled. I'll be carrying these down to the basement. Okay, I'll check back in with you in a few. All right, I ended up with eight full jars of tomatoes. These are mostly quartered. And I just went and picked some basil uh, from the herbs. And it's looking a little wilted. I uh, probably need to water that tonight. Anyway, we're going to put a few leaves in each jar and then I'm going to add a little bit of salt and then go ahead and top it off uh, with some water uh, to bring it up to the right level. And then we'll get these going in the canner and I will check back with you guys uh, once these are ready to come out of the canner. Alright, thanks for watching. Alright, I'm out here in the garden and as you can see, um, beans are terrible this year. I mean, these are dead. They've already been eaten up by something. This is horseradish. If you ever plant this, uh, best planting in a pot. We thought we got it all dug up last year. We didn't, and so this is kind of overtaken. But yeah, these all got fungusy, and so did these. Green. These these were supposed to be green beans, but they they never really showed up. So tomatoes are starting to die back. It's the first of September. Um, looks like I'll be picking a few probably tomorrow. But yeah, these are starting to die back, and. I've got more over here. We've got four more rows down there on the far end. Alright, so what I need to do right now is cut the rest of these peppers. These are Serrano peppers. I am getting ready to run a load in the freeze dryer. I'm trying to get all the peppers and I see a jalapeno that I missed. Uh, picking and then after I get all the peppers picked Except for I'm gonna leave these little guys down here. These are the little ones. I've been putting in vinegar and I'm gonna take all these plants um, Pull them out including the eggplants which are on the other side of these peppers We had a Look, this is what happens when you try and cut vegetables at night you miss them so yeah we got some more bell peppers here and get those in but yeah we had two rows of eggplant they were prolific this year and uh, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out and then after I get all the peppers cut of the peppers that I'm done with anyway get those taken out and then tomorrow I will plant some more uh, purple hole peas for a fall crop of that so I need to get busy cutting peppers. Get back in with you after a while. All right, so I promised you a towel softening video, so let's see how this goes. So the channel that I was watching was called This and That with Denise Jordan, I think it was. I will leave a link to her video in the description. So she says four things. One, wash towels by themselves. And I do have nothing but towels in there. Uh, some of them are kitchen towels that are not terry cloth, but it is just towels. The next thing she says is that you will want to add half a cup of baking soda. So I have that here. I'm just going to dump that in there. Now the only thing that she did different is she had a top loader, so she waited till it was full of water and then uh, mixed it in. Okay, so we're going to shut that. We're going to pull out the detergent drawer, and 
this thing's pretty kind of gross looking it's uh, about 18 years old now um, okay so she said uh, so okay so first thing is wash towels only uh, baking soda and then she says use less detergent so this is not very much detergent anyhow so we're gonna put this in the detergent cup all right and finally she says to add half a cup of vinegar to the rinse cycle uh, so that would be the softener and honestly I've never even used this container because I don't really I don't like to smell fabric softener so I won't use it and to me it makes the clothes feel kind of greasy okay so I got that on so let's start it up and again this washer's old so sometimes it doesn't want to start there we go okay so when these are done 40 minutes later I'm going to hang these online and a little bit this afternoon we will do a scratchy test and see if it helped um, I don't guess it matters one way or another because I still will probably continue to line dry my towels all right thanks for watching all right gonna get started on the crock pot recipe this is rabbit uh, specifically this was about five five point something pounds of rabbit the recipe that I'm making and I will link that down in the description um, it called for chicken um, and only two pounds uh, but this rabbit has still got bone in it so I will be deboning that and I'm probably going to beef up the original recipe by adding some vegetables such as some carrots and um, maybe some frozen peas if I can find some of those I think that would be pretty good now the original recipe I believe called for like a Buffalo Bills garlic parmesan or something but one of my friends that had posted this recipe there was another friend that commented that she had used the Olive Garden Italian and somehow I managed to get two open bottles in the fridge so I think between the two this is going to be enough it's supposed to be a 12 ounce bottle of that and a cup of milk and I'm going to use up this box milk that one of my sons had opened and then it calls for uh, cream cheese and I had this in the freezer and I'm still thawing it out um, and then after that there's some Parmesan cheese that goes in it and then basically you cook your uh, your favorite pasta and you're going to serve it over over that so I'm going to get this going and I will check back in with you guys later again I'll just link the recipe down in the description but I am doing some different things I'm using different type of meat um, I'm using the Olive Garden dressing and I'm probably gonna add some veggies so yeah it may not even be the the same recipe but the, the idea is the same all right check back with you in a few hey I've got the peppers ready to take down to the freeze dryer in fact I took one tray already but and I forgot to film so this is three out of four trays the other tray was full of Anaheim peppers I have a bowl to take out to the chickens when I get ready to feed them in the evening um, still waiting on the pressure canner to cool down enough to where I can take the jars out and I've got rabbit cooking I'll check back in with you in a few well this didn't go as planned I had one of the jars looks like it actually popped open on the lid and exploded everything out so <laughs> I get the rest of these out of the canner but I will have a mess to clean up all right thanks for watching I do like to experiment from time to time and I am suspecting that this may be an experiment gone bad from my last batch of tomatoes that would be those that I washed and labeled the jars this morning I had put the skins and um, seeds into the freeze dryer and my intention was to make a tomato powder now I'm going to probably had to pick out these large chunks of stem but I don't know I don't know if this is going to work out or not I'll try it and see. I was really hoping that maybe I could just get the tomato powder and not the seeds, but I don't know if that's possible or not. So I'll give it a shot. 
I'll put it in a little blender and, and see if I can make some powder without grinding the seeds or maybe if the seeds get ground in with it maybe they don't taste that bad. We'll see. Alright, so the potato peelings and seeds, they blend up all together into a nice powder. However, it is very bitter. So I am going to feed this experiment to the chickens. So if any of you guys are wondering if you can freeze dry the skins and the seeds, anything that comes out of a juicer, I think the seeds make it too, too bitter. If you had just the skins, I think it would be okay. But I consider this a failed experiment. All right, it's laundry time. So, I have to tell you, I had mixed results. It worked some of the time, and some of the time it didn't. And I don't know why. But on these washcloths, the blue ones are stiff. The red one is a little stiff, but the green and the yellow are soft. This dish towel is slightly rough, and of course these aren't terry, so I mean they're, they're kind of stiff, but that's okay. This towel, which is one that we put down a lot of times when we're doing canning, it's an old one, it's got some stains, is slightly stiff. Well, it is stiff, but not near as stiff as it usually is, so this actually worked. It worked on this white towel, it worked on that white dish towel, and the yellow and green washcloth. We come over here, the napkins are soft, but again, these blue ones are stiff. These are soft, these are soft, these are these are still st stiff, but that's okay. These are just dish towels and we put cannon jars on them. This bath towel is still <laughs> really stiff and scratchy. I mean, I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah. But this blue towel is much better. So I don't know if it has to do with the material. I do know that this is a high quality towel. Um, I got these towels, these pink ones, in 1994. That tells you how old they are. And this one was bought, this is a cheap one that was bought on a camping trip uh, when we forgot to pack some towels. So anyhow, mixed results. I'll probably do it again. I mean, it helps some. So, anyhow. All right. The uh, rabbit meal is about done. So I will bring you back when we are ready to serve that up. Thanks for watching. And here is the rabbit recipe. We are getting ready to eat dinner. Hey, well, it is a little after 7 o'clock tonight, and we went ahead and had dinner. Um, I didn't care for it that much. I think the salad dressing had a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of an artificial taste to it. Um, so it was not my favorite. Um, if I was starving, I would have eaten it, but I wasn't too hungry. So uh, Michael thought it was okay, though. And so just looking over this list, um, so I got the towels done. I washed and put away all those jars. I got the tomatoes can. I got the peppers in the freeze dryer. I made a rabbit dinner. Um, what I did not do, I did not pull the dead plants, partially because I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put them. Um, therefore, I did not pull out any of the purple hole peas to soak tonight. Um, I might look to do that this weekend. Um, and I really didn't have a chance to tidy on the basement, including um, putting away that freeze-dried food, all those uh, vegetables that I freeze-dried during the challenge for August. And as far as ordering the bins, I was able to verify um, that the Dollar General store in one of the neighboring towns has an adequate supply. So I think I am getting ready, now that we've had dinner, getting ready to go over there and just do a little bit of shopping. So. That's it for my busy day. Um, thanks for watching. See you later.